Hey guys, welcome to episode six of uh, SMG Viewers Comments. I'm kind of doing three episodes here, kind of all in one day, just so I've got some content for you guys as um, NAM's coming up and I'm gonna be out of the tent, out of uh, out of the country for at least a week. Uh, gonna be in LA for a few days, gonna be in Vegas for a couple days. So make sure to follow me on Twitter at SpectreMG and uh, you guys can uh, keep track of what I'm doing. I'll be tweeting out, you know, where I'm gonna be uh, going for lunch or dinner, that kind of thing. So if you're in one of those towns and wanna to hang out, you know, follow my Twitter feed, I'll let you know where I'm gonna be. Anyway, um, here we go, first question. I'm not bitching, but this is a perfect example of when drum sample replacement can work well. 400, when the drummer rides on his crash, it's bleeding into the snare mic, and the gate on the snare is messing up with the cymbal dynamics. If you replace just the snare with the original sound in this section only, the kit would sound better. Anyway, love the videos made, keep up the good work. All right, put down the bong, it's time to go to school. First off, nothing said before the word but means a damn thing. So quit your fucking bitching and pay attention. That's not a, what I'd call a good good reason to use a sample. Actually, it would've been a good reason to use Drumatom and not alter their performance or give it some bullshit because we're still get the real fucking hits. But Drumatom is an outstanding leakage suppression tool. But the focus for that particular video was the guitar sound, not so much the drum sound. And believe me, I would much rather have slight imperfections in the drum sound, a little bit of bleed, than bore the shit out of you guys with some drum samples. I expected a bit of a change in sound, but there was a huge difference between each head. Now thinking of your enemy, those dreaded samples. Let's say in a sample pack they have the same snare you have but different head, couldn't even come close. This information could be a bit of a game changer when it comes to me recording drums. Thanks. Yeah, that was uh, quite the educational video, wasn't it? The, I'm talking, of course, about the snare head shootout. And yeah, the, the tones, difference in tones was night and day just by changing the head. And personally, I was a big fan of the Aquarian, the big thicker ones like the high velocity and that kind of thing, I like big fat snare sounds. And the fact that you can crank those heads heads up and still get a really deep sound I thought was really fucking cool. A lot of you guys said, hey, you should have made some drum samples out of that. You should have made drum samples out of that. Well, I'm not gonna completely rule that out yet. You know, maybe I can I can do something down the road where we I take, you know, my four or five best snare drums and then we do 15 different heads on them. Maybe something like that would work. Also, I'll see what happens. You know, I'll, I'll talk to a few people about how to go about doing that, and perhaps I can make that available at some time in the future. Hey, Glenn, love all your videos. Quick question. I'm shopping for an interface and DAW for my home studio. I've been looking at the PreSonus 1818 VSL and was wondering if you've had any experience with it, and if so, what do you think of it? Thanks. Well, I have not had a chance to use the 1818 VSL yet. I ha did purchase a PreSonus Audio Box 2 channel. A deal a couple years ago because I just wanted something for portable recording and the mic preamps on it were absolute fucking garbage. Just this horrible ringing sound. They're completely unusable. Uh, and just to be fair to PreSonus though, I did buy it used off eBay and chances are somebody had dropped it and cracked the circuit board and the sounded like the preamps weren't grounded correctly. But anyway, the thing was pretty much fucking useless to me. I'll tell you, I did pick up a Mackie a Blackjack the other day for a portable recording, just a little two-channel deal, and that thing's fucking spectacular. The drivers on it are pretty rock solid. I know they had a big issue uh, with it when they first released it. The drivers were garbage, but um, these days... Yeah, the driver's support's actually pretty good and um, got some got, got some pretty good use out of it. I think I'm gonna do a full-on demo on that just to see if we can do some uh, amp sim uh, demos with it and whatnot, just see how well it works and how practical that is. But as for that PreSonus 8-channel uh, deck, I can't say anything about it. I've never used it. The one unit I did use was a, a competing one from Tascam, and uh, TJ the drummer, he has one, and I borrowed his occasionally, and the preamps are pretty fucking good, and the driver supports, um, you know, nothing to complain about with the driver support, it fucking works pretty well. So, um, while I can't recommend the PreSonus just because of lack of experience with it, I can recommend the Tascam. Check that out, you know, it might be worth taking a look at. Hey Glenn, you reminded me of a quote from Frank Zappa's Tinseltown Rebellion album. If you're out there and you're cute, maybe you're beautiful. I just want to tell you one thing. There's more of us ugly motherfuckers than you are. Yeah, I learned a long time ago, you know, it's like I was never going to be beautiful. I was never going to be cool. You know, might as well just fucking be myself. And uh, you know what? I'd rather be the ugly nerd than the uh, than the cute, dumb person. You're the shit, Glenn. As a bass guitarist, I love what you say about us. It motivates me to get better so I can be the 1%. Keep up this great fucking content. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much for writing that. I think this is one point a lot of guys don't get, like kids get butt hurt so fucking easily these days because I'm a little bit critical. Uh, 
when I was coming up in the 90s, you know, we had all these amazing fucking bass players, you know, like uh, the guy from fucking Anthrax and Les Claypool and Steve Harris and Cliff Burton and fucking just all these fucking amazing, amazing bass players. Again, Billy Gould from Faith No More, that kind of shit. And bass was a really big central part of rock music in the late 80s, early 90s. And, um, you know, when I opened my studio, you know, it's like, where's the great bass players? I want to hear great bass players because that's what fucking drives the song. I want to hear I want to hear guys take bass far more seriously than they normally do because bass is such a huge, important part of rock music. So uh, that's why I push so hard. That's why we have the rule number two shirt is just to remind everybody, hey, let's keep trying harder. Let's try and do better. <laughs>